Hey guys, even here, so yesterday was Texas Pro, it was an amazing show, it was very interesting and very exciting throughout all divisions, but now when all dust has settled, I wanted to do a little review of this show to mention a couple of things that we haven't really talked about uh, in the past videos, and uh, we're gonna start of course with Andrew Jack, we all know at this point that he won this show, uh, he was amazing, he really brought an amazing package, definitely improved from the last time we saw him on stage. I think we can all agree that the biggest improvement Andrew Jack made was in his back. Hamstrings are still lacking, like really bad, they didn't improve I think at all. Uh, glutes were probably not much more separated, not much more conditioned than the last time, so his lower body from behind really didn't improve that much, but his upper body, his back was definitely much much improved, it was much much deeper, much thicker, it was detailed from top to bottom, everything was just bigger and better and rounder and fuller, and even if his back wasn't that much improved, I think he would still beat Hunter because of his front poses, which were way more dominant than those of Hunter, from the back I think it was close between these two guys, but because of like that super small waist crazy wee taper, and just the symmetry of the back, like you can see every muscle clearly, everything is just perfect, like a perfect anatomy chart, you know, Hunter's back is developed, it's conditioned, it's big, it's wide, but genetically, structurally, it's not as good as Andrew's, and now that he got it to this level of development, it just looked crazy, it looked outstanding, and now there is one problem with Andrew Jack, it's not really much of an issue, he has a bit of a gyno, that's something that can be fixed in a week, basically, surgeries today are just very simple, uh, you do it and you don't train for like two weeks, and that's about it, so yeah, I, I hope he's gonna fix that, uh, as soon as possible, maybe right now would be like ideal time, so he can take some rest after the show, uh, recover from a surgery, and then get into Mr. Olympia prep, there isn't much time left between the Texas and the Mr. Olympia, there is like 10 weeks, 11 weeks, something like that, and he needs to take 2 or 3 weeks maybe off because of a surgery, if he decides to do it, if he doesn't do it, and he shows up on a Mr. Olympia stage like this, with this gyno, potentially even worse, because he's gonna be on gear for another 10-11 weeks, that's probably not gonna be ideal, it might cost him a couple of spots, I don't know, so it's definitely an issue, very easily fixable issue, but, you know, it's there, it's, it's visible, so I hope he's gonna fix that and he's not gonna have any consequences because of that, I hope those couple of weeks will even help him to refresh his body before he starts pushing it for the Mr. Olympia, so once again I hope he's gonna do it ASAP. Now the next question is where do I see Andrew Jack landing on that Mr. Olympia? And personally I see him somewhere in that top 5, you know, top 6. I don't see him beating guys like Hadi Chupan, Derek Lansford, Samson Dauda, Brandon Curry, but I could see him beating Big Ramy, which would put him in number 6, uh, I'm pretty sure he's gonna blow away Hunter the Mr. Olympia, just like he did at Texas, Hunter was 7th last year at the Mr. Olympia, and Andrew was 8, and now I think he's gonna beat Hunter, and uh, Big Ramy as well, I think Samson will move up, so I think Andrew is probably gonna be 6th, that's my prediction based on what I'm seeing right here, uh, he looked amazing once again, conditioning was good, uh, I would like to see even more fullness for Mr. Olympia, and overall, I wanna see him a bit bigger and fuller, I wanna see better hamstrings, but those are things that he can work on for the next Mr. Olympia, hopefully he's gonna beat uh, Brandon Curry and end up in the top 5, so he won't have to qualify next year, he can just work on improving his physique for the next year's Mr. Olympia, that would be amazing, we'll see what's gonna happen, anyways, he looked great, and he won the Texas Pro. Alright, next, Hunter Labrada, I don't want to talk about him too much, we already talked about him plenty when he won the Tampa Pro, he brought the best conditioning of his life, the best package overall, at this show, I don't think he was at his best, I think he was flat, and when he was so flat, it showcased a lot of weaknesses that he has, for example, that pack tear was more visible, the legs, that lateral head, he has crazy adductors, but his lateral head of the quadricep isn't really that dominant, and it showed that his show, his legs looked kind of flat, so I would say he wasn't at his 100%, and there was one glaring flaw 
that will be a big issue for him in the future in the Mr. Olympia. And that's his uh, gut. His stomach got messed up this year bad. Like, really bad. It's a mess now. I don't know how this happened. Does it have anything to do with the progress he made? Maybe he pushed his body a bit too much with, uh, I don't know, gear, with training, with uh, food. And he improved in every regard except for the stomach, which looks considerably worse now. Was it worth the sacrifice? I don't know, guys. You tell me. Uh, as you can see, it's not looking good. He practiced vacuums, you can see in all of his uh, prep videos and photos, he always uh, practices vacuums, but apparently it wasn't enough. You can, see, you can see the way his stomach looks in almost every pose from the front. That's something he needs to try and work on it, and I don't know, get it, get it to look a little bit better for the Mr. Olympia, because these things are not tolerated anymore. He's gonna be punished for this for sure. And I don't know how low could they place him, I mean, it's Mr. Olympia. At this show, at Texas, there wasn't anybody who could really beat him, you know, to put him lower than second. But on a Mr. Olympia stage, it could cost him quite a few of those spots. So we'll see what's gonna happen. Can he improve that? I doubt it. I think he, he messed it up, like feel he did at some point, and there was no going back from that. So I don't know. I don't know if it's fixable. It doesn't look like it is. I don't even know what happened to it. I just know that it doesn't look very good anymore. The next guy I wanted to talk about is Carlos Thomas Jr. Now, this guy, I have high expectations from him. I thought that he actually had a legit chance of winning this show. Mainly because he looked so massive in his physique updates. And he did not disappoint in that regard. He definitely did look freaking big for his frame. But his conditioning was off. I mean, it was okay, it was decent, but it wasn't on the level of these guys, top Olympians, right? So he needs to get super shredded if he wants to beat them, can be competitive against them. And also, you know, his frame, like, he's a short guy. The other guys are just much bigger when they stand next to him in comparison. So, yeah, that was an issue, that is an issue, it's gonna be an issue. But, like, there are guys like Derek Lansford, like Nick Walker, who are also very short, and they are dominating on the Mr. Olympia stage. I mean, the Mr. Olympia champion is a former 212 competitor, Harry Japan. So, I don't think height is that much of an issue. I think if Carlos Thomas was shredded, if he gets shredded, super, super shredded, he's gonna look amazing. He can still look very good with all this muscle, with all this, with this crazy shape, with this crazy uh, proportions, you know, super small waist, huge arms, huge legs, crazy chest. Of course, one thing he needs to work on the most is his back. But hey, everybody has weaknesses, everybody has flaws. And I'm sure he will improve that back over the years. From the front, he's pretty much done. <laughs> as far as muscularity, I don't think he needs to get any bigger. I don't think he can get any bigger than this. I mean, let's be real. Like This is pretty much maxed out. On his frame, I don't see how he can put on any more muscle. I'm sure he's gonna find a way. <laughs> but he is massive right now. He needs to bring up the back and get conditioning on point, and he's gonna be deadly, for sure. Now, as far as 212, we all know Keelan Pearson won the 212 division at Texas Pro. Here is another guy who is about the same height as Carlos Thomas Jr., but he is nowhere near Carlos's muscularity. In case you were wondering why Carlos doesn't do 212 because of his height, this is why. I mean, uh, Keon is about the same height, similar height. And as you can see, uh, he's packing way less muscle, way less. It's different quality, like top 3 in the Open and the winner of 212, there's a huge difference. It's not only height. Maybe 212 Mr. Olympia, or like top 2, top 3 at the Mr. Olympia can battle against the Open guys, but, you know, top 6, top 10 at the Mr. Olympia, those guys can't really hang against the big boys. And Keon, he looked amazing. I mean, he looked at definitely at his best so far. I'm pretty sure about that. I don't think he could have looked any better at this point in time. He definitely improved, yeah. He grew. Uh, his stomach also is getting worse. That, uh, that separation in the middle, that gap uh, in his abs is just getting wider and wider. And it's definitely ruining his aesthetics. He used to be uh, one of the most aesthetic guys in all divisions. But this, this, this thing about his stomach is definitely hurting his aesthetics, his look. Once again, I have no clue what the hell is that, how does that happen, how can it be fixed, no idea, but yeah, as you can see, 
it's it's definitely not looking very nice. I used to think this guy has one of the best aesthetics in the world, but I can't say that anymore, not even close. With that stomach gap, it definitely it definitely ruined his aesthetics. Now, as far as him being a 212 bodybuilder, it's not gonna hurt him that much. He's not classic anymore. He grew a ton from his classic days. Here, his conditioning was okay, and I think he needs to be much better for the Mr. Olympia, and I'm sure it will be. I'm sure him and his coach Patrick Tour know what they're doing. He didn't need to be any better than this to win this show. It wasn't really that competitive in a 212, but the Mr. Olympia, it's a completely different story. He definitely needs to be more conditioned than this to, to, to be really competitive at the Mr. Olympia stage, but also I think he needs more time to just improve on his physique, to get more maturity, to get uh, even bigger and better. If he wants to be like the top two top three guy in the 212 i think he has the potential it's gonna take some more time i think this photo really shows what i'm talking about when i say maturity development time so it's gonna take him a while until he gets to this level uh, for example of a top 10 olympian in the open he needs to bring up that chest that's like the biggest thing uh, it was much worse before he improved it a ton but it still needs to be much bigger much better it's a big body part it's an important body part so he needs to work on it silhouette is awesome i mean the legs are looking great uh, the arms are looking big uh, he looked great overall in this show but as far as quality as far as maturity as far as development once again i think he's gonna need a lot more time to to improve on that physique to be really competitive in the 212 olympia all right, as far as the classic physique at Texas Pro, no, Logan Franklin did not win it. I think he was third or fourth. Robert Timms, uh, aka Mr. Classic Physique, which is his Instagram uh, name, he also didn't win. I think he was second here. Uh, the guy in the middle, in the in the bottom photo, uh, won this show. Uh, Logan Franklin, I, I want to talk about him because like he has the tools, you know, we all want to see him at his maximum potential. He has the shape, he is an amazing poser. We all wanted to see him at last year's Mr. Olympia, but something was wrong. He didn't feel good and he didn't even go to the stage. He was uh, prepped by Milo Sharchev at that time. And then after that, he spoke uh, about how he doesn't need a coach. He was saying that whatever he was doing uh, for the protocol for the Mr. Olympia messed him up. I think it messed up his stomach, if I'm remembering correctly. And after that, he said he was going to prep for the shows and try to qualify for the Mr. Olympia, but he's going to do it alone, without a coach. So how did that go? Not very good. Not very well. You gotta have a coach, man. I mean, look at him here. He was definitely flat, smooth, soft, not conditioned enough, not hard enough. I think he got this third place here basically based on his reputation and posing and stuff like that, but as far as conditioning and just overall package, he didn't really bring it, like he could have been much much better, so I think look at his pose, it's really good, he has a lot of potential, but again, he needs to be more conditioned, fuller, harder, he needs to go back to Milos Sarcev if Milos would accept him, uh, or find a new coach who can pick him right, I don't know how many shows are there left, how many opportunities he's got to qualify for the Mr. Olympia, but uh, yeah, this was definitely not good enough. I mean, he was pretty sharp from the back now when I'm looking at this video, but from the front, especially those quads, looked very, very soft. And uh, yeah, his posing was amazing, he has amazing structure, he has a beautiful shape for classic physique, but yeah, he definitely needs a coach, he can't pick right on his own. So that sums it up pretty much, uh, this was a great show, one of the better shows this year, but I think I would have to say that last year it was better, we had Andrew Jack also, but we also had Steve Kuklo, Martin Fitzwater who looked amazing, Phil Klahar, Quint Beastwood was doing it, there was a lot of great guys last year, and it was Andrew's uh, pro debut and he looked amazing, I liked that look a lot, like from the front especially, he was full, I don't think he ever brought fullness quite like that, especially in the legs and the arms, I think his back is much improved this year, his conditioning too, but still, I prefer the full look, I prefer the full look from last year, so I want to see him bring something like that to the Mr. Olympia stage now that he's qualified, and uh, with his improvements, and maybe with a bit better conditioning than at this Texas Pro last year, uh, he's gonna look amazing, and once again, top 5, top 6 is a very high possibility, what do you guys think? As I said, I think he's gonna be able to beat Big Ramy this year at the Mr. Olympia, because I think Big Ramy's physique is just getting worse and worse, I think it's over with Big Ramy, I don't think he's gonna be at his best ever again, unfortunately, I'm a big fan of Big Ramy, at least I used to be, of his physique, but these days, 
it's it's not very good. He has a lot of issues. We all know what happened to his physique, what his flaws are now. Everything is just looking worse than before for whatever reason. Maybe that stem cell treatment works out in the end and he comes, you know, looking super fresh. I doubt that's gonna happen. We didn't even know if he's gonna be competing at this year's Mr. Olympia. We all thought he might retire. But based on this post right here, it seems like no, he's gonna still be doing it. So he posted this photo, as you can see, and he says, it's time to embrace the burn, embrace the challenge, and embrace the best version of yourself. And he posted this at how many? 10, 11 weeks out of Mr. Olympia. So that kind of means that he's prepping for the Mr. Olympia. And I don't know if you guys remember, but when Bob Chicarillo told him that he needs to, that he should stop competing because he's getting worse and worse and his placements are getting worse, uh, he basically had a response to that, he said that he doesn't want to stop, he wants to compete still. And if you look at it from the perspective of like, he's still one of the top guys, he's still probably gonna be in that, I don't know, top 6, top 7, that's still like top 7 in the world. So if he can pull that, if he doesn't fall any lower, even if he's top 10 in the Mr. Olympia, that's still a big success. He can still win pro shows, he can still get big contracts, he can still be relevant. If he can do that, and if he doesn't have any injuries that can prevent him from enjoying the training and competing, if his health is fine, then hell yeah, he should do it. You can look at it from a different perspective, being that he is the Mr. Olympia two times. Maybe he should just, you know, because of his legacy, stop competing if he's not at the top anymore. But then, like, Dexter Jackson, you know, won the Mr. Olympia and he competed for another, how many, 12 years or so. And he was, he never won the Mr. Olympia again, but he was always in the top six. And his legacy is enormous. He's one of the biggest, best bodybuilders, biggest names in bodybuilding of all time. So, if Big Remy still enjoys it and he wants to do it, he definitely should. Based on this post, I think it's pretty safe to say that he's gonna be competing once again. I don't think he can be uh, in that top six again. I don't think he can beat Andrew Jack. Not this year, not anymore. But then again, who knows? Maybe he comes in super improved, much better, and he does it. Andrew already beat him at the Arnold Classic, so I think he's already ahead of him. And Andrew looked even better at Texas than he did at the Arnold, and I think he's gonna be even better for the Mr. Olympia. And Big Grammy, I don't know, I don't think he's gonna be improved, but who knows what's gonna happen, you guys tell me what you think in the comment section down below, if you guys enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up, if you wanna see more bodybuilding content like this on this channel, please subscribe, and if you wanna show me some love, some support, if you wanna help me to keep this awesome cut for you guys, you can just click on the link in the description of this video, and just buy any of the old school lab supplements you like, but make sure to use the code EVAN which will give you a 15% discount and I get something from it as well. So thank you guys so much, all the best and bye-bye.